Welcome to Hot Topics in Science. My name is Savannah and I'll be your host for today. Today's episode is very special. It is on the fascinating world of biotechnology. We will be covering many areas, uh, specifically the new areas in science. First of all, we have guest speaker, biotechnologist who specializes in cloning, Alexa Lacanche. Hi. How are you, Alexa? I'm good, thank you. Good. So, Alexa, to my knowledge, one new technique is the cloning of genes in bacterial plasmids. Can you explain this process to our viewers? Yes, I can. This is um, the process of cloning genes in bacterial plasmids is when you select a um, certain trait or gene that you isolate in the DNA, and what you do is you put it into a host, such as bacteria. And what this bacteria will do is it will um, multiply, and thus you will have an amplified piece of this gene. I also know that in the new process of DNA fingerprinting, scientists can either match up the base pairs of someone's DNA or find repeating patterns in the DNA to save time. Does this give an individual fingerprint? No, however, um, it can tell us what if two samples of DNA are from the same person. So what's the deal with gel electrophoresis? Okay, well this is a much different process. It was developed in the 1970s, I believe. And um, what happens is you use electricity to um, separate DNA fragments. What happens is you have it in the gel matrix and you shoot um, a current of electricity through it. And what happens is the larger pieces of DNA, which weigh more, will move like more slowly towards the positive pole since DNA is negative. So the, and the faster fragments, the smaller ones, will move faster towards this pole. So you'll actually have like a range of um, the different weights of your DNA fragments and they'll all be separated nicely for you. Very interesting. So what's that new method that enables researchers to make millions of copies of DNA in under two hours? This is actually called polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Can you tell me more about that? Of course. Um, this is um, a technique used to make millions and millions of copies of DNA. You take a small piece of DNA and am actually amplify it. I know that the process of restriction fragment length polymorphosis gives valuable information in many areas of biology. What does this include exactly? Um, this includes screening DNA for the presence of potentially um, dangerous diseases and it gives evidence in crime scenes. So it's very helpful. Oh, of course. Is it true that one new technique is created completely by robot machines? Yes, and this is DNA micro ASA. What's that? This is when you actually take genes and you try to figure out how active they are in particular cells. Since obviously every single cell has the same genes, just certain ones are turned on and off. And what you do is you insert like a fluorescent coloring into your DNA and when you look at it, the genes that are being more produced will be more fluorescent, they'll be brighter. The ones that aren't really produced as much will be less fluorescent. And the ones that um, aren't even turned on in that cell won't have any color. Cool. Now, I know that stem cells are a very well-known, but also a very controversial topic. Can you inform all of our viewers more about stem cells? Yes, stem cells are actually, um, when you're first developing, they're found in the embryo and the fetus, and they're also found in the umbilical cord. Now, what makes these cells so important is the fact that you can take these cells and they can literally be transferred into every, anything. So medically, that's amazing. I mean, you can fix diseases. If someone has a burn, you can create a skin graft out of stem cells just by programming them to what you want them to be. Cool. Gene therapy is said to have the potential to not only cure diseases one day, but also to control what our babies are like. Do you see this as one day being a possibility? Um, I do. I think that, that could definitely happen with gene therapy. Um, we could be able to activate or inactivate specific genes in our babies and control certain phenotypes. So you could technically generate your own child. Now to the hottest topic in science that everyone's talking about, cloning. Alexa, what exactly is cloning? Cloning is when you um, create an organism that is the ex has the exact genetic makeup and it's a copy of another organism. Um, all the DNA will be the same and a natural example of this would actually be identical twins. Oh. So how would scientists go about the procedure of cloning? Well, there's two different ways you could do this. One is artificial embryo twinning. What you do is when you have an embryo, you separate it early on and then you just implant it into the surrogate mother and you will end up with two um, embryos and they'll grow and you'll have twins. 
Another way is somatic cell nuclear transfer. Now what you do is, say you have a somatic cell, what you're going to do is you're going to take this nucleus out and then you'll have an egg cell, you'll take that um, nucleus out and you'll insert the nucleus from a somatic cell into this egg cell. Um, this will be implanted into the mother and it'll, if all the conditions are correct, grow into a fetus. Is there an example of that? Um, well, you could think of Dolly, that sheep that was made a couple years oh, ago. Yeah. Everyone knows about that. Um, they did it in like pretty much that way. They were able to produce one. And what happened was, again, you take the nucleus of the cell, insert it, and eventually it grew into a sheep after it was birthed by the surrogate mother. So, I mean, it's been done. It's very hard. But do you think we could ever do that on humans one day? Um, I do believe we can. Some people see it as a benefit, while others would see it as a very controversial topic. Speaking but. of which, there has to be several benefits, right? Oh, of course. Um, one is, the first one is medically, and there's a lot of benefits, so bear with me. Um, medically, you can actually use cloning to te as we test animals. Instead of waiting for um, new generations to be produced, you can actually just have new clones being made of these samples, and as you test these animals with different things, you don't have to wait for the new generation to be birthed, I suppose. Um, another one is to revive species, either being extinct or close to extinction and endangered. You can actually clone these um, organisms, and through this you will have a plethora of animals that can try to revive the species. Another one is um, reproducing a pet, which I know sounds a little silly, but you can, if your pet is deceased and you really, really want it back, you like really loved it and you have the money, you can genetically make a new version of your pet. Would it have the same personality? No, it wouldn't, unfortunately. You can't really program that. However, they might look similar. It all depends. Um, a fourth one, really quick, is again, as you brought up, humans. We can help infertile people have kids through cloning, and you can replace a deceased child. That's, again, very questionable on the morality of that, but we'll get to that a little later. So, what's the catch? What are the risks and issues associated with cloning? Well, one of the biggest problems with cloning is that it has a really high failure rate. Um, 0.1 to 3% is successful. So, out of all these clones that you're creating, a lot of them won't even work. Um, there's a lot of different reasons for this. One is that the egg in the nucleus might just not be compatible. You insert it, it doesn't program the egg, it, it just doesn't work. Another one is it may not divide properly, so once you have the egg and the nucleus together, they might just not go through mitosis, things can go wrong, it won't survive. Um, the implantation also might not be compatible. When you insert your embryo, essentially, into your mother, it might not grow, it might not implant, it just won't work, and you can also have a failed pregnancy, which, again, isn't good. Um, another problem is during the development, like when these baby clones are born, a lot of them have this thing that scientists are calling large offspring syndrome. And what happens during this is your um, the baby clone will be bigger at birth, so they'll have like enlarged lungs, enlarged organs, etc. And this can um, cause problem with breathing and the circulation of blood, so you never really know what could go wrong and it could die. Another one is um, abnormal gene expression. So when you have a nucleus that's been in a normal somatic cell, it's been programmed to do other things. It's been keeping the organism alive. It hasn't been programmed to just reproduce an entire embryo and make it a whole other animal. So it has to reprogram itself to have normal development. And if that isn't done properly, then your clone will survive. And finally, the last one is telomeric differences. And as we know and we've studied, a lot of people know, um, the old nucleus will have shorter telomeres since each time a cell divides, the telomeres at the end of the chromosomes become shorter. If you insert an old nucleus into an egg cell, by the time it starts dividing, it may not even work because it'll just kill itself. And um, like in Dolly's case, they found that the telomeres were shorter, but in a lot of other ones, they're too long. So scientists haven't been able to solve the mystery of telomeres yet. So it's like the mystery of cell suicide. I know. <laughs> so I also suppose that it's a very personal belief whether you agree or disagree with uh, cloning and whether you think that it could be a benefit in today's world. Yeah. Now personally, I believe that it could be potentially great for human beings and animals in the fact that we could even grow organs for those who need transplants in humans. People could say, get their lives saved every single day. How about your view, Alexa? Um, I agree with a lot of points you've made, but I also disagree with some parts of that. I think cloning would be great if we could clone just the organ, but if you're cloning humans or animals, 
just to harvest their organs. I think that's really wrong, and I don't think that's morally correct. Um, however, I do think it would be helpful to revive species that humanity has pretty much wiped out, such as like pandas and other endangered species. By um, cloning, you'll be able to repopulate that and really, really help the world. Um, but again, like it's all up to different people, you know, like if the morality of it, like whether or not you want to play with fate, play God, also has some different roles. So it depends on everyone's opinion. Well, thank you for your time, Alexa. All right, thank you. Thank you for watching. This has been a great episode of Hot Topics in Science. See you next time.